Hey everyone, this is Michael Dougal, the nootropic reviewer, and during this video, I'm going to share with you my routine that I use to optimize my testosterone levels. We're going to talk about supplements, we're going to talk about lifestyle factors like sleep, like diet, like the optimal training routine for you to increase those testosterone levels because I'm somebody that actually had low testosterone in the past and then I was on TRT for several months, but what I didn't like about TRT was like, it blasted my testosterone levels up to the point that my libido was sky high. It was honestly really distractible. So you don't need to have testosterone levels really that high if your goal is productivity. And fortunately, I got off of TRT and I've used a number of supplements to help me. And I have through that journey better determined which few supplements work the best, which I'm gonna share with you right here. Uh, the very first one would be Tonkat Alley. Um, Tonkat Alley is tried, tested, and true. There's research showing that if you use the right form of Tonkat Alley in the right way, it'll be such that it can increase your libido, it can increase your testosterone, and um, especially help you when it comes to the gym and building muscle, let's say losing fat. Um, when I first started taking Tonkat Alley, would be just over a year now, I was plateaued with a number of my lifts, including a bench press and shoulder press. And that was one of the biggest signs for me that Tonkat Alley was doing something was that I busted through those plateaus pretty easily. And all I was taking was, was about 200 to 300 milligrams a day. So I've talked in depth about the Tonkat Alley benefits during this video over here. What I have learned is that the form of Tonkat Alley really does matter. So the form that I particularly use is from Nootropics Depot, that they have the right percentage of your culminones to ensure that you're getting a good Tonkat Alley experience. And for whatever reason, like the powder seems to be more effective than the capsules. I mean, I could be wrong about that. I'm hoping somebody corrects me, but that's been my experience. And the one thing to note with the supplement is you should definitely take it with a meal. If you do not take it with a meal, then you're exposed to a number of side effects like nausea. Some people feel like they're vomiting. So definitely consider taking it not only with a meal, but ideally the biggest meal of your day. And it doesn't really matter too much during the day when you take it. Some people like it at night. It's not that stimulating. And the next supplement, which has really helped me is Tribulus Terrestris. The form that I'm using is by Now Foods. And then it's typically sold in one gram tablets or there's 750 milligram tablets. That's also good. And the way that you may want to start taking it is by taking one tablet per day, ideally in the evening. But if you do go up to two tablets a day, that could work out as well. I um, like taking it once in the morning, once in the evening. That's how I'm typically using it. Within an hour of waking, I'm taking one gram of tribulus. And then right before bed, like 30 minutes before sleeping, I'll have another gram of tribulus. That works really well. I definitely recommend that you stay away from the powder. It tastes really, really bad. Like it will just stay in your mouth. You can brush your teeth, but you won't be able to get rid of that taste. Probably like one of the worst tasting supplements out there. This supplement like really is something else. I haven't personally experienced any side effects. You won't read about many side effects on the internet. I've pretty much been using it almost every day since uh, 2013. And the way that I found out about Tribulus was uh, what happened was when I was seeking something that could boost my testosterone levels, I thought, okay, why don't I just get one of these blends that will help uh, boost testosterone levels. And the one that I found specifically was this one here by Pharma Freak called Test Freak. And I used Test Freak for a month. It really, really worked. And then it came to the point that I actually went through each ingredient and tried them and that's how I could pinpoint that Tribulus was the one that was doing pretty much most of the work when it came to Test Freak. And when I first started taking Tribulus, what I noticed was I was getting much deeper sleep. Like I was waking up feeling rejuvenated. And I noticed being in a sales job, being a real estate agent, I was much more aggressive with calling my leads, asking them questions, closing for appointments, pretty much the state you want to be when it comes to productivity. It didn't help um, as much with muscle building than Tonkat Ali did. But at the same time, Tribulus doesn't have the same amount of side effects and and it's such that like a good like rule of thumb to remember is that the stronger supplements can be very often the stronger their side effects are so what i like about tribulus versus tonkat alley is that it doesn't need to be cycled off that often i think taking a routine of something like 90 days on 10 days off works well with tribulus whereas when you're taking something like tonkat alley i'm um, having an approach of maybe two months on followed by two weeks off works well i'd say if your goal is productivity you'll be better off with tribulus but if your goal is building muscle you'll probably be better off taking tonkat alley unfortunately with tribulus though there's not much research supporting its effects but it has been been my experience that it works if you get it from the right brand, the right vendor. So those two are pretty much the main ones, but because I've tried several other ones, I'm going to go through them and give you my rating of them out of 10. First, we've got zinc. I would rate that four out of 10. Uh, to, if you were to take a dose like 20 to 30 milligrams daily, it does do something, but not too much of a benefit. Next, ashwagandha, I would rate it three out of 10. 
I don't really find it effective at all. It still surprises me that people use ashwagandha for workouts or to blunt their cortisol levels as maybe it may do that and help with stress, but I've not really seen any sort of benefit with respect to uh, building testosterone levels. But I'm sure that a lot of you disagree with me on that and you're welcome to comment um, in the chat box below with your experience using ashwagandha for increasing your testosterone levels. Next, we have uh, deaspartic acid. I actually like this one. I'd probably rate it like a five out of 10. Um, when I started taking deaspartic acid, I noticed that my mood was considerably better. I wasn't in my head as much it was easier to talk to people but i didn't really notice like deeper sleep or some of those signs that it is improving your testosterone levels and it pretty much didn't have any benefit in building a better physique so it was nice that it helped with mood not so much with testosterone although it's a pretty like uh highly rated supplement for testosterone. I would say a very overrated, so don't waste your time with that, and I wouldn't as well waste your money. It could be pretty expensive. Next, we have uh, Forskolin. I'd rate this one out of 10. Not much to say. I didn't notice anything at all. Um, next, we have Maca. It was okay. I'd say two to three out of 10. I didn't notice too much from it, but uh, perhaps I was in a little bit of a better mood. Maybe I had a little bit more energy. Next, we have a Velvet Antler. This one I'm not too sure about. Uh, probably a four out of 10. I didn't notice much when I was taking it by itself, but I came across a couple of blends where maybe it helped, but then again, it was a blend. I'm not sure if it was Velvet Antler or it was something else that was responsible for it. And I do think that with Velvet Antler, it may really have like diminishing effects. Like the first month I used it, I was pretty happy with the results. Second month didn't work. And then when I used it, like a few months afterwards, I still couldn't get the same benefit I had when I used it that very first month, which is really surprising. What about creatine? Creatine, I'd rate three out of 10. I don't really think it has much of a benefit with building testosterone levels, but there is a one neat study that was used on rugby players that show creatine could be pretty promising. Uh, one thing great though about creatine is it seems to make you want to lift very heavy. And as a result of lifting heavy, um, especially on those main lifts, your compound lifts, like your bench press, squat, deadlift, battle, um, as a result, increase your testosterone level. So creatine can be seen as a good supplement that way. What about Shilajit? Shilajit um, used it for about 90 days straight, expecting that it would help my testosterone levels. I didn't notice anything whatsoever. So I'd say a one out of 10, maybe a two out of 10, given that there are um, benefits with it outside of building testosterone levels like stress resilience and overall productivity. And those are pretty much the main ones. Vitamin D is also really good to have in your diet. Uh, definitely consider having some omega-3. So I like taking fish oil by Nutrisy specifically and ensure you're getting like a good amount of EPA and DHA and you're taking fish oil from a good brand because you don't want to be taking fish oil from uh, polluted water bodies and that is a really big issue right now. And when it comes to diet, make sure you are not under eating. This is really important because a number of studies have shown that not getting enough calories in your day or being in a calorie deficit is going to decrease testosterone levels. So what that looks like is either staying at maintenance calories or being slightly over maintenance and following somewhat of a balanced diet with respect to macros, which looks like uh, for some people like 40% carbohydrate, uh, perhaps 30% protein or 30% fat, or some people go something like 45% carbohydrate, 30% uh, fat, and then the rest being protein. It's really important that you get enough carbohydrates and know that you need to earn your carbs. And what that means is the more active you are, the more you can get away with eating carbohydrates as your insulin sensitivity will be higher and you'll function a lot better unless you're on a keto diet, but ensure that you're also getting enough fat because fat, it's gonna be the really integral part, like the building block, of building testosterone. I would under no circumstance to, uh, have less than 20% of your calories coming from fat. Ensure they're good fat sources too. And this is pretty easy to do. You can just go on Google and search up any food and they will likely tell you how much saturated fat as well as polyunsaturated and monounsaturated fat is contained within that food. So ensure that you're getting that, get some fat in every single meal. Um, the only exception to that when you can underread is if you are trying to lose body fat, maybe you are in a calorie deficit. And why that may be good for you is because there is research showing that being overweight or having excess fat can actually lower your testosterone levels. So a good approach of taking if you are somebody that's overweight is maybe get into to a calorie deficit for the time being, perhaps three to six months, depending on how much weight you have to lose. And that's a time when maybe you can get away with having a little bit less fat in your diet, maybe a little bit less carbohydrates. But then once you have achieved your new maintenance weight and, you, and you're eating at maintenance calories, then you can get your fat back in your diet, you can get your carbohydrates back in your diet, and you'll be able to have good testosterone levels and good libido. And I will talk a little bit about fitness. Uh, with fitness, a really big mistake that people make is overtraining, and that will easily decrease your testosterone level. So if you're doing high intensity interval training, for instance, a lot of people don't realize it really affects your body. It affects your recovery. It will likely make you too sore. So if you are going to do high intensity interval training and you have that in your schedule, because there is some really great health benefits around it and how high 
uh, you're raising your heart rate, I would say keep it to a minimal, maybe once, max twice a week. I don't really think cardio has a huge benefit with building your testosterone levels, or that hasn't been my experience. So if you are going to do it, you're gonna be better off doing it in a fed state, not fasted. When you're fasted, you're in a catabolic state, you're using muscle for fuel. It's really not that great for uh, building testosterone levels. What the most effective thing is going to be is weight training. Think heavy weights, think compound lifts. Like I mentioned, squats, bench press, overhead press, uh, pull-ups, push-ups, exercises which are going to require a number of muscle groups in order to function. And the research really isn't clear on what the optimal rep range is. Like for me, I like doing something like four to eight reps. That seems to work best, but the research shows that rep ranges all the way up to like nine to 10 are quite effective as well. In this um, study over here, they took two groups. There wasn't much of a difference between the group that was uh, doing nine to 10 repetitions or the group that was doing six repetitions. And they found that the group that was doing six sets did have, um, you can say like the optimal hormonal response with not only testosterone, but growth hormone levels as well. So don't overtrain. At the same time, don't undertrain and think that you're gonna get much of a benefit. For me, what that looks like is uh, I lift four times a week. I'll do cardio uh, twice a week. Sometimes I'll throw in one high intensity interval training depending on how I'm feeling. And that's uh, really what works for me along with consistency and taking care of my mood, my stress levels, all that, which thankfully I can do through the use of nootropics that I've talked about. In this video over here, you'll learn about my top five nootropics that I'll be using throughout the course of the year. And I really hope you did get value from this video. If you did, then subscribe. And if you're a returning viewer, then be sure to drop a comment so I know you're here. And if you'd like to chat with me one-on-one, -on -one, you can do so over on Patreon or send me a direct message on Instagram. And be sure to join us on our Discord server where we're having a lot of fun and hosting this 24-7 uh, chat room. And I'll look forward to seeing you all next time.